all your smiling faces. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Well, we are, so we invite you to stand with us as we enter into God's presence through praise and worship. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, 
say this, say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I refuse to be sad. I refuse to be mad about anything or anybody. I choose to be glad. I choose to be happy. I choose to be cheerful. I choose to rejoice in the victory in the victory that Jesus paid for. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord saying this, O oh, death, where's thy sting? O oh, grave, where's thy victory? The sting of death is sin, the strength of sin is the law, but thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory, hallelujah, through our Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Amen. I, I, can I tell off on you? Can I tell off on you? You won't get embarrassed, will you? <laughs> I was down here yesterday just, you know, getting ready to do some praying, and, and he was down here to clean the church. He said, Pastor, I want to tell you something. He said, I was down here cleaning the last time. He said, when I got done cleaning the sanctuary, he said, I just stayed in the sanctuary and read the Bible for a while. He said, I felt so much peace in this place. I said, that's because God's here, brother. God's in this house. I said, God's in this house. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't go by feeding, but boy, it sure feels good, doesn't it? Amen. Hallelujah. I say, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Let's praise him for a little bit. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Now, that was a victory slap. When I slapped my brother, that's a victory slap. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. I'm going to talk to you this morning about faith. Everybody say faith. faith. Faith in connection with your words. Words. 
few Christians understand the connection between what they say and what they get. I hope you're the few that understands that. Because many don't. They just speak flippantly, think nothing about it, you know, and then I got to clean up the mess. That they, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Greater. Say greater. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Say this. Say the devil's a defeated foe. Jesus defeated him long ago. The devil's a loser. He's a liar. He's headed to a lake of fire. And you're going up higher. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. I said glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory. I said glory. Glory. Ha 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 <laughs> thank you, Lord. I said, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, let's just praise him. Let's just, let's just magnify his name. Let's just magnify his name. Are you having any troubles in your life anywhere? <laughs> For you see, I paid the victory 2,000 years ago. So don't hang your head down. Stand your ground. Don't drop back into, into defeat. But stand your ground. Know this, that in me you are complete. So don't back up. Don't back down. You're about to be raised to higher ground. You're not going down. Refuse to quit. For you see, I'm about to turn some things around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what the Lord said when I prayed in tongues. I interpreted my tongues. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory.
Hallelujah. For his holiness, for his righteousness, for his faithfulness, for his forgiveness, for his deliverance, for his salvation, for his victory that he paid for with his very own blood to save you, to heal you, to deliver you, to prosper you, to make things right in your life. Is something wrong in your life? Jesus came to make things right. Now as Rosha comes to do the announcements, just remain in attitude of worship. Amen. And then, I'll, then we'll sing another song when she gets done with the announcements. And then I'll come up Hallelujah. and preach a message. And, and uh, it'll, it'll be good. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. Well. Hallelujah. 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 God is good, isn't he? Hallelujah. It's nice to just be able to uh, bask in his presence sometimes. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to know that that God wants us to just come and be with him. Amen. Hallelujah. He's not one of those who's like, oh, well, bring me something you need. No. He wants us to come at all times, whether we have a need or not, Amen. especially when we don't have a need. Come and be in his presence. Hallelujah. So, woo. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's nice when the Holy Spirit moves, isn't it? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, good morning. Welcome to Liberty Life Church. We're glad you're here today. Hallelujah. Uh, as Pastor said, I do have a few announcements. We're coming to the end of August, the beginning of September already. It's hard to believe we're that far into the year, isn't it? Well, this Wednesday is the fifth Wednesday of the month, Liberty Fun Night at 6.30 p.m. Come and join us. Bring something to share. Bring someone to share it with. We'll have a good time with food, faith, and fellowship down in the fellowship hall. Uh, that is starting at 6.30 p.m. So feel free to come a little bit early so we're ready to start at 6.30. Hallelujah. It's going to be good. It's always good. There's always good food. So come and join us. The 4th of September is Labor Day. So the church office will be closed. If you need something, try get on Tuesday. See me on Sunday morning. We'll get you settled. But we're not going to be in on the 4th because it is Labor Day. And we want to be able to spend some time with our families and such as well. So, And if you didn't realize it was that close, the 4th is Labor Day. <laughs> The ninth is our first, we are restarting corporate prayer. So the ninth is our first startup on that September 9th. We are going to start at 7 o'clock with a leadership system lesson by Dr. Dean Radke. It's about 20 minutes long. So we had started them several years ago. And then we had COVID hit. And then <laughs> all this other stuff came along. So we went, you know what? We're going to finally do these. So the leadership system lesson will start at 7. It's about 20 minutes long, and then we're going to pray after that. So probably about an hour total for, but it is Saturday the 9th. We will also, we will be doing it two Saturdays a month, the second and the fourth Saturday, generally speaking. But we'll make sure you know what the dates are, because sometimes things come up. So be looking forward to that. Come out. It is good to learn how to be a leader in all areas of life. We do want to let people know the 24th is Communion Sunday. So if you want to put that on your calendar as a good day to invite somebody and let them know that God loves them. Hallelujah. There are a couple more things going on in September, but those are the ones we want to make sure you know about right this moment. Those are the announcements I have for this moment, this morning. So <laughs> if you'd like to stand and join us again, you're welcome to do so. We're going to sing one more song before Pastor comes to give the word. Hallelujah. And Pastor will be receiving the offering at the end of the service. So, so we haven't forgotten about tithes and offerings. We're just going to do it later in the service. Hallelujah. He is our way maker. Amen. Our miracle worker, our promise keeper. Aren't you glad? And he's here. Amen. He's here in our midst today.
Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker. stops. He's working whether you feel him working or not. He's working. Amen. He's working in your heart today. He's working in your body today. He's working in your life today. He's working in your finances today. He's working in your behalf today. So just receive his goodness. Receive his promises. Amen. Receive from the Lord today. Amen. Well, you can be seated. Thank you, Liberty. Worship team, give them a hand clap, please. As they come down off the platform. Hallelujah. Going to talk to you about faith this morning. In connection with your words. Let me ask you a question. You ready for this? What you been saying? Huh? I said, what you been saying? Because that's what you're having in your life. Amen? Like Brother Charles Capp said, most Christians are saying what they have instead of having what they say. Amen? Go to Hebrews chapter 11, please. That's a good place to start. We're going to talk about faith. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And uh, let's read verse 1 for our Foundational scripture this morning, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, says, Now faith is, well, faith is what? Now faith is the substance, say the substance. We can say it like this, faith is the stuff, I like that, of things hoped for. And the word hope there means earnest expectation. We can read, this, read that like this. Now, faith is the stuff or the substance of things for which you earnestly expect. What are you expecting? Faith will bring to pass whatever you're expecting. Now, faith is the substance of things for which you earnestly expect. It's the evidence, say the evidence. It's the evidence of things not seen. If the word says I have it, then I have it. The word's all the evidence that I need. If the word says I'm healed, well, then I am. If the word says I'm blessed, well, then I am. Amen? Now then, faith, say faith. Faith is not a feeling. Faith is a force that when released will draw to you the things that belong to you. Faith is a positive force. Say faith is a positive force. Conversely, fear is a negative force that will draw to you things you do not want. Both faith and fear are released through words. Let me ask you again. What are you saying? So one is positive. The other is negative. 
One works for you. The other works against you. Speaking positive faith words will cause things to work in your favor. Amen? Speaking negative, fearful words will cause things to work against your faith that God's given to you. So be careful what you're saying. Amen? And don't talk about the devil all the time. He's defeated. Quit giving him glory. Give God the glory. Brag on God. Brag on his goodness. Brag on his faithfulness. Brag on his forgiveness. Brag on his deliverance. How to brag on his salvation. Brag on his word. Brag on his promises. Brag on what he's doing in your life. Brag on God. Quit bringing the devil up. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. When you speak positive words that are in line with God's word, you're putting your faith to work for you. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Keep your faith working for you. So keep your faith working for you. Now go to uh, the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. The Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, beginning in verse uh, 10. Jesus said, Believest thou not that I'm in the Father, and the Father in me? He's asking a question. Then he said this, to answer the question. The words that I speak unto you, say words. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. What would happen in our lives, you think, if you want to say what God said? And stop saying what your flesh is saying. Stop saying what the devil's saying. I know Charles Capps had a habit before he learned the power of his words to always bring the devil up when he'd pray. And the Lord spoke to him one time and said, you know, I'd appreciate it if you quit bragging on the devil all the time. Talk about what he's doing. Talk about what I'm doing. Talk about what my word says. Amen. Amen. I say, amen. Amen. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I'm in the Father, the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. In other words, Jesus saying, what's the results that I get? Then he said in verse 12, verily, verily. Verily there means truly. In other words, he's saying this, what I'm about to say to you now, I'm not lying about this. <laughs> very, very, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Wow. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. Let me ask you a question. Has he already gone to the Father? then we're to be doing the greater works. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now just hold on here. Verse 13, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything, say anything, in my name, I will do it. Now, He's not talking here about prayer. He didn't say a word about praying to the Father here, did he? He said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. And the word ask there in the Greek means demand. Whatever you demand in my name, I will do it. So, Jesus here is saying this. He gave us his name. So that I could do the same things he did. 
Can you say amen to that? He gave you his name so that you can do, could do the same things that he did. Amen? Now then, I'm not the son of God, but I'm a son of God. You aren't the son of God, but you're sons and daughters of God. And the son gave his sons and daughters, God's sons and daughters, his name so he could do what the son does. Amen? Amen. I say amen. amen. Hallelujah. How do we do that? By speaking the things in his name. When I release faith in the name of Jesus, when I pray or speak to things, God will honor my words the same as he would if Jesus said them. Why? Because I'm saying them in his name. His name gives me power of attorney. If a wealthy person, a wealthy aunt or uncle, gives you power of attorney, that means you can write checks in their name. And the bank will honor it the same as they would if they wrote it, the check. Why? You have power of attorney. Well, guess what? God's giving you power of attorney. You can use his name. Hallelujah. You can speak the things in his name, and those things will honor your words the same as they would if Jesus spoke them. Hallelujah. Because the power... And the authority are in his name. Hallelujah. Say in his name. name. Glory to God. Now then. Whatever you say. Will come to pass. If you believe it in your heart and don't doubt. Because the power. And the authority that's in that name. Speaking Positive faith words, say positive faith words, is key to all of this. Because if you're speaking negative, fearful words, your words are going to work against your faith. Your words will, will work against the promises of God. But yet Christian people, bless their hearts, do it all the time. Even so-called faith people do this. Speak negative, fearful, fearful words. Words out of line with the word of God. That's why I always say, I pastor a vital life turned on church. I don't speak negative about you all. I speak very positive about you all. I talk about how wonderful you are. How that I pastor a wonderful church family. Because I understand the power of my words. Amen. I Release the blessing through my words. But when you speak negative, fearful words, you release the curse upon those to whom you're speaking about. Can you say amen to that? I hope you get this this morning. Let this get down on the inside of you. Let this get in your spirit and change your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory. Let's just praise him for a little bit here. Let's just, let's just lift our hands and just praise him. Give him honor and glory. That he gave us his name. And that God will honor our words. The same as what if Jesus said them. If we'll speak them in faith and use his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Our words are the most holy thing that God gave to us. So, watch your words. Turn your neighbor and say, watch your words. <laughs> now smile when you say it. Now smile when you say it now. Amen. Smile when you say it. Amen. Smile when you say it. Praise the Lord. Now go to uh, Mark the fifth chapter. Mark the fifth chapter. Verse uh, 25. It says, a certain woman, which had an issue of blood for 12 years. That's a long time. To have an incurable blood disease. And I suffered many things of many physicians. 
and spent all that she had, but was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, oh glory, when she heard of Jesus, have you heard of Jesus? Raise your hand if you've heard of Jesus. When she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched him, not what it says, touched the hem of his garment. Touched his garment. Verse 28. Now here, here's, here's the key right here. For she said, see, she said something. She said something. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, not even touch him, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall, now the word shall is the strongest assertion in the English language. It leaves no room for ifs, ands, or buts. I shall be whole. She spoke the answer, not the problem. Too many Christians, bless their hearts, bless their hearts, I love them, I love them, are always speaking their problems. No, 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 don't speak the answer. This here's the answer. What are you speaking? Huh? What are you speaking? What are you talking about in your life? What are you talking about over, over coffee? What are you talking about whenever you call somebody on, with your iPhone? What are you talking about? This right here is the answer. Amen. Speak the answer. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Verse 29, and straightway. The word straightway there means immediately. The fountain of her blood was dried up. Oh, glory. She felt in her body that she's healed of that plague. This also work in the midst of a pandemic. Amen. For the record, for the record, for the record, I will not comply with any mandates. You work for me. I don't work for you. You're not my, I'm not your slave. I'm not your servant. You're my employee. I will continue to preach this gospel and lay hands upon the sick in obedience to the Great Commission. Amen. Answer to God Almighty, not J.B. Prisker. Amen. This may not make YouTube, that's okay. <laughs> Amen. I may get canceled, but God won't cancel me. I said, but God won't cancel me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I love, I, I bless J.B. Prisker, Lord. I bless him, Father, in the name of Jesus. We bless all these politicians, Lord. We bless them. We don't curse them. We bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? See, the multitude was thronging him, but only the woman with the issue of blood touched him. Yeah. Here's my question. Are you thronging Jesus this morning, or are you touching him? Yeah. Thronging him, you won't receive from him. Yeah. But if you touch him, you'll receive from him. Amen. This was the touch of faith. She touched him with the touch of faith. And disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude throng in thee, and sayest thou who touched me? He looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Jesus said unto her, Daughter, thy faith, your faith, your faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and behold thy plague. Now, this woman here with the issue of blood spoke words. Positive faith words. Her faith was released through her words. Her words connected her to the anointing that was on Jesus. And she received her a miracle. Your words can connect you with the anointing that's on Jesus. And you can receive your miracle. He's here this morning. Working in our midst. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, here's something. When I was reading this yesterday, meditating this, the Lord showed me I, I didn't see this before. He said this to me. He said, most people identify with the woman with issue of blood. 
because they're always identifying with something that, that they need. Few identify in this story here with Jesus. Few identify as one who is anointed to deliver someone, but rather to identify with this person that's always in need, always needs something, always needy. Why not identify with Jesus as the one whom he anointed, as one of God's sons and daughters, to deliver someone who's in need? Huh? We just read from John the 14th chapter that we can do what he did, even greater works than these can we do. Right, can't we? I said, can't we? Yeah, yeah. Amen. So, but you know, we humans, we're, we're creatures of habit. And we tend to identify with the negative rather than the positive. And that's sad. See yourself anointed. Quit begging God to anoint you. See yourself anointed. See yourself delivering those around you. Go to Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. And uh, look at uh, verse uh, 9. It says a hypocrite. There's none in this place, Lord. <laughs> There's no hypocrites in this place. You know, you ever heard somebody say, well, I would go to that church, but too many hypocrites there. That's where they're supposed to go. That's where they can get freedom from this thing that's, that's, that's come against them. I invite all the hypocrites to come to this church. I invite all the sinners to come to this church. Prostitutes, homosexuals, drug addicts, come to this church. This is where you're going to find freedom and salvation and deliverance, praise God. Huh? Amen. Amen. No, we don't kick anybody out. We just kick the devil out. We love people, but we hate evil. A hypocrite with his mouth. Say, with his mouth. Now listen now. A hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. Well, if a hypocrite with his mouth can destroy his neighbor, then a righteous person with his mouth can deliver his neighbor. You get that? I said, if a hypocrite with his mouth can destroy his neighbor, then a righteous person, say, that's me, can deliver a person with his mouth. Amen? People all around you have dire needs. And God's anointed you to be their deliverer. But you got to see yourself as their deliverer. you got to see yourself as the answer to their prayers. Come on now. I'm trying to help you think on a higher level this morning. This is the gospel I'm preaching to you. The gospel is good news, you know. The gospel is good news, you know. Because you're the only Jesus they're ever going to see. He sent you to help them. He sent you to minister to them. He sent you to deliver them. He sent you to be the answer to their prayer. Go to Mark chapter 4, please. So train yourself to speak only positive faith words. That's it and nothing else. Mark chapter 4. Verse uh, 35. The same day when evening was come, Jesus saith unto his disciples, Let us pass over unto, to, unto the other side. And when they sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind. Say a great storm of wind. So this is not just a Sunday afternoon pop-up thunderstorm as some would have you to believe. No, it says a great storm of wind. Now, Rick Renner, who's a Greek and Hebrew scholar, said that this was a storm of hurricane proportions. This storm was demonic. It was not a natural storm. It was demonic. It came out of the spirit realm. And it was aimed at Jesus and his disciples to take them out. Huh? And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves, say the waves, beat into the ship so that it was now full. And Jesus was in the 
hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. He wasn't too concerned about it, was he? You can sleep in the midst of a storm. And they wake him and say to him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? So right away the disciples blame Jesus, don't they? Do you know that if you blame, it means you don't want to change? Smile real big. If you blame, it means you don't want to change. And he arose. What did he do? He rebuked the wind. Now, how do you rebuke the wind? Hmm? By saying something. He said something, didn't he? Huh? He wasn't silent. Amen? Faith, for faith to work, you have to say something. Your faith is lying dormant if you aren't saying something. If you're silent, your faith is lying dormant. He rose, rebuked the wind, and he said unto the sea, what did he say? Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Now, I want to show you something here now. I want, I want you to see this. Very few see this, what I'm about to tell you here. Very few have seen this. Jesus here was conducting spiritual warfare. Very few see that. Okay? When you conduct spiritual warfare, you have to first deal in the spiritual realm, then the natural realm. Most Christians do just the opposite. They deal in the natural. They stay there all the time, in the natural. No, Jesus dealt first in the spiritual realm. Hmm? He spoke to the wind first. That's the spiritual realm. You can't see the wind. The wind's invisible. These demons that stirred the storm up were invisible. You can't see them. But they were behind the whole thing. Jesus knew that. So he dealt with the spiritual first. He spoke to the wind. He rebuked the wind, which was the cause of the waves, which... Represents the natural realm. Do you see that there? See, he was showing us here how to conduct spiritual warfare. You deal with the spiritual realm first. Everything happening to you right now in your life, everything, was good or bad, positive or negative, is coming out of the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm has authority over the natural realm. you know that yeah yeah what you cannot see with these eyes is more real than what you can see heaven's more real than the earth you know you can't see it that's where we're headed though Woo, glory that's where we're headed amen hallelujah so he spoke to the wind which was a spiritual then he spoke to the waves which was caused by the wind or the demons which you cannot see the ways is the natural he said peace be still and both the wind and the waves obeyed the master amen they obeyed him not because he's a son of God the wind and the waves obeyed the master because he spoke words of faith. They obeyed faith-filled words. Amen. Jesus spoke positive faith words. Hallelujah. And both the wind and the waves obeyed him. Can you say amen to that? So when he spoke faith words, what was he doing? He was putting his faith to work. Now go to Luke chapter 17, please. Luke chapter 17. And uh, I'm going to begin reading in uh, verse 3. Jesus said, take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. 
And if he repent, forgive him. If he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the, and the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Now, why did they say that? Because it takes faith to walk in forgiveness. You step out of love, your faith won't work. Because faith works by love. You've got to be quick to forgive people and believe the best of everyone. Amen? Hallelujah. So, you always take dominion or your circumstances in the spirit. Then you love people. I said, then you love people. You can't go around and get mad at people and have this work for you. I'm telling people off and all that. It won't work. It won't work. Verse 6, and the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say, notice the word say there. You see, you got to say something for your faith to work. You might say unto the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. But which of you, having a servant, plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him, By and by, when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meat. And will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself, and serve me. Circle the word serve. Faith was given unto you to serve you. He's still talking here about faith. Faith is your servant. It was given to you by God to serve you. And serve me till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and, and drink. Doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say we are, we are unprofitable servants, we have done that which was our duty to do. So when you speak positive faith words, what are you doing? You're putting your faith to work for you. Amen. Amen. And when faith is released, it will bring to pass not only what God said, but what you said. What you say. Last scripture, go to Mark chapter 11, and you'll see it. Mark chapter 11, Jesus said in verse 22, he said, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, this obstacle the standing in your way between you and manifest victory be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which is saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith Jesus said you can have what you say if you believe in your heart and don't doubt the master said this Therefore I say unto you, what things have you desire when you pray? Believe you see them, you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, your Father, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. So, Jesus here is saying this. If you're facing an obstacle, he did not say to get on your iPhone. And tell others about it. He didn't even say to pray about it. You know people do that all the time. Well somebody said. Pastor. I had to get this off my chest. You ever heard anyone say that? I hear it said all the time. Christian people say this all the time. I had to get it off my chest. I, I feel so much better now. Well let me ask you a question. Did your, did your, did your circumstance change? Did, did the problem go away? No. See here's the problem with that. That's not how Jesus said to do it. He never said to talk to God about it and then tell others about it and then go on Facebook and talk some more about it. That's not what he said to do. He said to speak to the mountain. He said, if you'll speak to the mountain in my name and in faith, he said, it will be removed and it will be cast into the sea. Now, your job then is to believe it's removed. Yes. Not to go around and tell everyone what you're going through and what you're dealing with in your life. Getting kind of quiet in here this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. 
That's why I so enjoy pastoring the most vital life, turned on church. Amen. South of New Mercy. Amen. And north of Life Point Church. To keep myself safe here. To keep myself on the good side of the pastors, my, fat, my pastor friends, you know. Right. Amen. Amen. I pastor the most wonderful congregation. Amen. I could talk about my problems and share what I'm going through, but it would not bring, it would not bring any glory to Jesus. And it would not change the situation and make it worse. I choose to obey the word of God. I choose to obey Jesus. Why not go to Jesus and to your father with his goodness, with his promises, instead of all your problems? You don't want to hear that mess. Why not remind him what his word says? And remind your mountain of who you are and who you are in Christ. Hello. I said, hello. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Lord. If we'll do it the way Jesus had to do it, we'll get the results that the Bible says we can expect. Amen. If I don't do it his way, then I can't blame God for, for the lack of results that I'm getting. Amen. Say, I love my pastor. I love my church family. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Let's stand up here. So, speaking positive faith words is what will put your faith to work and will cause things to work in your favor. We're going to do that right now. Amen. I'm going to use my words right now to speak the blessing over you. Amen. And I have faith in my words. Because I'm going to speak this blessing over you in the name of Jesus. And have faith in my words that when I speak the blessing over you, that the blessing of Abraham will come upon you. And then if you'll watch your words, hallelujah, you'll connect with his word. Amen. Amen. And that blessing will be operational in your life. Can you say amen to that? Amen. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare and I decree that every family represented in this place this morning is blessed. Blessed, blessed, blessed. And so I say in the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name. Now ushers, praise God you may serve the people please. Praise God. Are y'all blessed this morning? Amen. It's good to see you, Brother Greg. Really good to see you, my brother. Amen. <laughs> so good to see you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Giving me the victory So I 
words coming out your mouth. You'll walk in victory all the time. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Don't forget Tuesday and Thursday morning prayer at 730. Wednesday night, Liberty Fun Night, 630. We're going to eat, bring some food, and let's have some fun. God bless you. Have a great week.